So it's good to be sitting here with you again. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, doing shows with you guys. Oh, fuck yeah. yes. This is going to be a lot of fun tonight. Uh, we're here to uh, talk about uh, Lighthouse. Yeah. But I got to watch you guys. I don't, I don't think I told you this. Uh, <laughs> Kansas City. Okay. Yeah. My backstage room was a dugout. Oh, yeah. So I just came up in the dugout and watched you guys. I was right there. <laughs> it was amazing. And there was people watching you guys, but they were facing the yeah, other way. Sure, yeah. So I just had, like, this full, like, it was so great to have you guys back. It's always cool, man. It's uh, uh, our bands together. You know, you, you, you guys have had a, had a slew of great artists uh, out with you guys, as you deserve. And, and uh, But I think there's a extra yeah. little edge with our bands together. I really dig it. But yeah. we, love, we love doing shows with you guys. So. Yeah. Let's talk about the lighthouse. Uh, you know, that's an interesting, interesting title. You yes. know, uh, it's also one of my favorite movies of the last couple of years too. Jesus. You, you know, know it yeah. wasn't inspired. One of my yeah. favorite movies too. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, you know how we write songs because you and I do it together. Yeah. You know, and there's three chords, and there's a piece of wordage you hope to stumble sure. across the truth in those words, right? Yeah. And um, like that's it. Like a few chords and like a, a lyric. You work so hard on the damn lyrics, so so you know about this. And I had "Let Me Be Your Lighthouse" uh, or "Won't You Be My Lighthouse." I couldn't figure sure. out which one. And it, "Won't yeah. You Be My" and that's and it was during COVID and uh, that time of like nobody around except for Susan and me. Yeah. And we've been together for so long, as you know, right? <laughs> and, and we were like watching people get divorced. Like we'd hear yeah. stuff, like 20 year relationship, yeah. getting divorced. And we were just getting closer and closer. We we're like, this is fucking rad. We get to yeah. hang out all the time. And we know how to give each other space. I'm my studio, and blah, blah, blah. But, um, but I, I was like, um, Susan's really been this, this, this beacon of light for me through all kinds of stuff. She's just so like, yeah genuine and sweet you know her she's just like she's yeah I the mean, nicest you, you guys, person you guys are you know you guys were absolutely meant to be together yeah. and you know, lean, have leaned on each other through a lot of great stuff and a lot of tough stuff yeah you know you've um, seen it all it means a lot to me that you guys have the family that you do yeah you've been yeah. over for christmas yeah yeah <laughs> um but susan during the senate um i just it, it, to to what you just said like the song is like sure um, I will. I will get to that lighthouse somehow, somewhere. And I use the sea, and I use the rocks, and I use the wind, and mm -hmm. like what shit you got to go through on a, you know, out on a lifeboat or something, and you're trying to get to sure. that lighthouse. And that's her. And that can also have a double meaning of of like us humans, yeah. humanity, looking for that that beacon of hope, or sure, or be the lighthouse for each other. You know, you know, sometimes. Uh, uh, as you as you know, we all we all kind of lose lose the path or or lose the thread or or uh, take shots in life and and that's when you lean on the people that you care the most you know yeah. uh, uh, the, at those times you know you and I and will then, take like nine shots before we go <laughs> look for yeah the, like I true. got this that's true but it's nice to have those people and then in turn uh, a lot of the times. Uh, you don't realize a lot of the time when you're being maybe a lighthouse yeah. for somebody else. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I just, you know, when I hit upon Just Don't Know, the song yeah. you and I did, and, yeah. and you were gracious enough to come <laughs> and foot your lead. Great and your, song. And your, your energy on that song yeah. and your, your backing vocals. And it was just such a, like, for you to come in on that song was so perfect because this, this, you and I have so much in common, and we're around the same age. Yeah. And I was walking our dog during, you know, again, nobody was, nobody's out. It's nighttime. There's the stars. I'm in Seattle. There's the lake. And I'm walking. Twirls our dog. She's just like this innocent thing who wants to go for her walk. And I, <laughs> and I had this song, and it had a melody, but yeah. I didn't have words yet. Yeah. And I was like, to the ether's ever glow. I'm looking at the stars, you know. I'm looking at the water. And... Uh, the ocean's undertow, you know, fuck. And I started getting the lyrics for this sure. thing. I had to pick up Twirl. She just wanted to walk, man. Yeah. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I got to pick you up. I didn't have my yeah. phone. Yeah. I got to cut it short yeah. and get back and write the lyrics. And, and you were so gracious uh, 
to once I had the acoustic. I think I just had the acoustic. Beat. Yes. Uh, yeah, maybe just a little bit of string a on it. A little bit maybe. of strings. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you know, the thing that caught me was, uh, uh, and 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 this is this this is what you're this is what you've been trying to communicate is is trying to get to some sort of a truth. You know, uh, yeah. some some sort of a some sort of emotion that really really tugs that string, and and I immediately felt that on that song, and and uh, it's what you're always trying to get to, and, and that song was just so powerful. Uh, you know, when you asked me to play on it, I'm like, absolutely, you know, it's yeah. from, I'm there. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's kind of that thing, like, wondering, not in a morbid way, like, what's next? Like, yeah. What is, sure. what is this thing? Like, uh, lived through some things. I have this, we all had yeah. this period to reflect, a couple of years to reflect. You thought it was gonna be two weeks, and then four weeks, yeah. and then six. And um, yeah, that turned it. You is, know. is this Armageddon? <laughs> is it? Is I mean, you know, you don't know, and um, and it's uh, I just don't know. That's yeah. I mean, uh, and you came into my studio, and that was great having your energy in that fucking place. Yeah, tell me, tell tell me about the studio. Uh, that place is amazing. It's totally cool. I remember you were telling me you were talking to a guy who who had the studio, uh, you know, in the U district, and and. Uh, had had it for many years, but he, and he was thinking of selling it, but he didn't want it to be developed, that's right? It. Because that's what's happening everywhere, yeah. Uh, in Seattle, especially, uh, you know, uh, historic, historic uh, buildings are just getting, or, and lots are just getting bought, knocked down, and then a you know four, four or more story yeah. building goes up. Yeah, yeah. So. And the D U district, they can do, uh, I think it's eight stories eight. now. Okay, down where where yeah, I am. That's crazy. So it was a handshake deal. It was an old guy from Ballard, yeah. and he had this place for, I think, some time. Um, how long it was a studio before me? I think back in the '60s, we hear lore yeah. that the Beatles did a backing vocal in there. Okay, and I love that. Was like, he in a band, or was he just an engineer that liked to record? No, music? no. The guy that I bought it from was just a businessman. Okay, yeah. like a lawyer yeah. who owned this building for. He was old, old guy. Sure, owned it forever, maybe. Some of his family owned it before that. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the 20s or something, it was a store. Right. You know? Um, but when I walked in, I was looking for a place for like my motorcycles and my backline, my gear. Sure. You know? Close to home. Close yeah. to home. Yeah. And uh, we found like Andy, my friend Andy, he was, he was looking for me. Places were so expensive up here and this and that. And then we happened a problem in the studio that this guy made it a good price. Yeah. Because he only wanted to sell it to a musician. Yeah. And it was a handshake deal that I wouldn't develop it for five years. That's all he asked. That's right. Yeah. So I yeah. said, of course. And uh, so, but just walking into that place the first yeah. time, the vibe in there was. It's you were meant to be there. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, it's kind of a, kind of a, uh, <clears throat> I, I, I was surprised that it, that it was there. Yeah. Not that I'm, and there's little pockets of creative places and studios and stuff all over in, in every city, but. But I mean, it was perfect for you. It's like the stones throw from where you live. It's uh, it's a, uh, it's an amazing, uh, you know, it's an amazing creative space and and uh, parking in the back and parking in the back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, um, yeah, I don't know. You know, uh, just just going in that place for the first time and the like the vibe. We didn't have to do much. Yeah. We put carpets and some soundboard up, and really, not much more. <laughs> moved my gear in. I mean, I sure. used the same gear. Turnkey, yeah. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. What's so, the name of the studio? I mean, there's a name. You got to call it something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, what do we go with that? Yeah? You, you want to make it... Uh, Duff's Cool uh, Studio. Yeah, we just call it, <laughs> we call it Duff's Cool Studio. There is a name, but you might be able to track me down. Here's what I was going to say. Um, Here's what I was gonna say. I got, I found, and this is, I mean, there's a studio, like a little mini Abbey Road with the, you know, the, the yeah. uh, control room above the, the live room, and none of the Pearl Jam guys knew about this place. Like, you know, none of you guys knew about this place. Soundgarden I, yeah. guys, yeah. Uh, Matt Cameron, who's yeah. recorded everywhere. Yeah. It's like, oh, Kim didn't know about it. Kim went yeah. to UW, you know. That's, uh, that's what was so surprising to me, for sure. Uh, yeah, whoa, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Who's been here? Yeah. Um, but it's it's uh, it's been it's been just uh, magical having a place, getting it you know, 
some months, just a f scant few months before COVID started. Yeah. You know, or whatever you want to call that period. That's sure. Lockdown. Yeah, yeah. Basically. Did you have any of these ideas or, or did everything in the writing process really kind of come from that time, just starting from a zero? I mean, I know, I know myself uh, as a writer, uh, you know, you might have musical ideas and I guess it's probably the same for you too. They're, you know, having a musical riff or an idea, you probably just store them in whatever your phone, the computer, yeah. uh, uh, you know, I used to, I used to have one of those little, little, Oh, night, yeah, yeah. night soccer coach koshak thing the reporter thing that you talked into for ideas uh and, and maybe like a little bit of a melody or whatever but when uh when i'm writing it i i i always you know i might borrow uh, borrow from those pieces they're little seeds that you collect yeah. i guess and then and then, okay maybe it's time to plant this one and just see what happens with it but uh did you you had nothing written on on this record before this was all started right right in the COVID window there? Well, I think I had some songs, as I remember it. Um, I had four or five songs I wanted to, to record. I knew I had to go back down to LA to start okay. rehearsal for yeah. GNR to go to South America. Yeah. In January of 2020. <laughs> it was good. I had to leave in January. Uh, so I was there and I got started recording songs I'm like, oh, this place So you sounds... were into the process. Yeah, yeah. and so I, buy, I yeah. do that. I mean, that was like garage band. It was like Brighton for me. We're already, already rolling, but then, okay. Yeah. All right. right, right, right. Got it. Um, so I had little pieces on my garage band. That's where I keep most of my stuff. Yeah. Just little, I call them my crappy little demos. Yeah. That only really I can understand. Yeah. Um, wouldn't play them really for anybody else. It's me humming a... <laughs> of course, of course, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but I'll have some of that stuff like la Lighthouse. I'm 700 in here. I'm yeah. sure there is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. From uh, the last 20 years, yeah. Yeah, oh, oh yeah. yeah, you got just, them all. Just little riffs and or singing into the phone or whatever, yeah. But wow. yeah, garage. so you got to use the garage band? So I, yeah, so yeah. I busted out. I might have had a couple couple songs. I don't really on my own. Uh, I, I wrote a song called "This Is the Song." I wrote it during a panic attack. Yep. I put it out last May. Yep. And I, that's the one song. Like I sat, I was literally having a panic attack, and I, this is the song that's gonna save my life. And I realized in this, I wrote all the lyrics. Right. And what, which I don't usually do in a one yeah. sitting kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Alexa Pro, what else? I don't know. It just came, and it brought me out of my panic attack. This I discovered a new tool for my acoustic guitar. Like I'm in a pa panic attack, just get on the acoustic guitar and write a song, and it yeah. brought me through this thing. But usually, I'll have a melody, which is with, with like you know, "Won't You Be Like My" with a lyric, "Won't You Be My Lighthouse," or I just don't know. Sure. You know. Yeah. Um, and uh, then I'll take it in, and I'll, I'll get the acoustic, I'll get the parts. I, usually a bridge is the thing that, like, well, I love a good bridge. I love a good bridge. Sure. Once I have that bridge, I'm like, okay, so I got the, this is my verse. <laughs> this is my chorus. Obviously, this is my chorus. Put the bridge somewhere. And, you know, I don't have a formula, but I kind of, I guess I do. Yeah. Um, when you're writing by yourself, you're not going to have a ton of connector weird shit. You know, when you're writing with a band, you're like, let's do this three times and a half times, <laughs> you know, and then go here. Um, so I got five songs in, went down to rehearse for South America. You know, what happened? Hey, everybody should start washing their hands. Oh, yeah? Hey, we should leave the doors open at rehearsal. <laughs> oh, yeah? Um, so we brought in masks one day. How do you put yeah. this on? And then we went down and played Mexico City, and that was March 10th, and that's when... It's just like, because it wasn't in Mexico or South America yet. So yeah. Like, oh, we can just outrun this. So thing. that was your last gig before yeah. it shut down. Yeah. And we flew back to Seattle. And then I was just in, you know, yeah. man. And, and songwriting, I don't have to tell you any of this shit. But songwriting, you know, you're in a place that's comfortable and you're getting results. It begets more songwriting. Sure. Yeah. And it just, I'd like, I'd go home for the night and I'd write two more pieces. Yeah. You know, Martin, I got two more song ideas. Of course you do, you know. And, and at the end of this thing, I ended up with nearly sixty songs. Nearly sixty songs. So money in the bank. Always, you know, it's always good having that many uh, great ideas to be able to pull out and use. You know what I mean? To be in the process. Uh, uh, 
I'm sure you've experienced this, and I, I was curious about, you know, like, uh, have you have you ever like hung on to an idea like for like maybe like a writing period, whether it's a Guns N' Roses, whether a uh, Guns N' Roses record or, or a Duff record or whatever. It doesn't do. make that particular one, but maybe like a record or two down the road, it finally finds its shape and its form. But you know, it's good enough to hold on to and to keep tinkering with. I've right. got I've got yeah. a few of those that I'm yeah. like oh, this would have been good on on this first record, <laughs> but you know I'm holding on to that for sure something else. But this is all fresh stuff, and that's got to feel really good. Yeah, you know what I mean, uh, getting to uh, it's always scary for me uh, in a way, and I and I I, I, uh, I think a lot of things that are worth worthwhile uh, doing uh, and also gratifying doing or or have a pretty good element of fear to it, you know, for me, absolutely. you know what I mean? I'm like, fuck, what the, f what am I going to do now? You know what I mean? Like starting from an absolute zero t is terrifying, but it's necessary, you know? Yeah. Um, but you have enough of those moments now that you know you're going to get It's through. true, but yeah. but it doesn't lessen the feeling or, uh, or, no. or, or, or make the pr process less frustrating for me, which is like, Okay, put the put the spikes on. Let's get the let's get the oxygen. Let's start climbing the mountain. You know what I mean? Like okay, it's so it's <laughs> it's gonna, a, it's gonna be a, it might be a little slippery some spots. Might be a little dicey. Might get a little cold. Yeah. You know, might be a little little terrifying or or death defying yeah. at moments. Yeah. But but uh, it's kind of exhilarating. You know to to. Uh, to go through the process, it yeah. is for me, and I'm and I know it is for you. Um, yeah, I I recently heard. Uh, uh, I recently heard the Long Long Feather song. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to me about that a little bit. That, that's, right. That's a cool imagery on that song. Right. So, um, you know, I, I was like, what's what's chords that have some movement, you know? And I was just to boom, 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 boom. I don't usually write in sort of yeah. like, I guess somebody pointed out to me, oh, it's just in 10-4. Like, yes, yeah, it's, okay. it's definitely as, asymmetrical for sure, right. and that's what I loved about it, you know, because it it still has a f great flow to it, you know. Yeah. yeah, rock and roll. I only count to four, so so <laughs> ten four is really confusing for me. So, but anyhow, I had this um, again. It was the chorus. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, long feathers home. Like, what is that? Has to be the the words for this, and what is that? What does that mean to me? And I know what it means to me. I know what it fucking means to me. And when I got sober and went into to Benny martial arts and, and yeah. just fully, because I, I wanted what was in his eyes. And I met him, somebody introduced us, and he said he would Your take sensei. me. My sensei. Yeah. Benny. I'm sorry, yeah. yes. Yeah. And he said he would take me in. And uh, he had just got done with a 20 year undefeated career. He was, he's the legend, man. And this guy with this, knowledge and everything calm in his eyes i'm like how the fuck do you get that <laughs> we didn't know that we sh we saw somebody like that when we were using we're like yeah fuck off i'm out right and now i wanted this and i was the mystery and the and yeah so i dove in and i was doing two you know two a days in the dojo and i would just you know like boils and stuff were coming out and just but at the end of the day we would do a got me into this, this meditation just to go someplace and build my own little house and I could do work on myself there. Being honest with yourself. Yeah. Look in the mirror in this place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Sure. Look in the mirror. Sure. What are you talking about? And, and in the morning at home, keep your house clean. Yeah. Keep your body clean. Keep your yeah. clothes clean. Look at yourself in the mirror and smile in the morning. Yeah. And today's a good day to die. Like, what's that part? <laughs> what's that have to do with anything? Yeah. And, and um, since they've been Blackfoot, Indian. Yeah. So there's a lot of the stuff in my martial arts that, man, it parallels the 12 steps of the AA. Yeah. Hand I mean, hand these hand are hand universal hand truths. Hand in hand. You know? Yeah. Sure. And uh, yeah. the being honest, and I started making phone calls and trying to meet with people. Like, did I do something? Uh, I have, I have this memory that I might have became probably another lighthouse for you, yeah. right? No, oh, oh man, yeah. my God! But but yeah. today yeah. is a good day to die. Really um, means after a year or more of looking at myself, in the, I realized because I'd made all the calls that day before, I'd met the people, I kept myself clean, I had nothing. I woke up one morning, I had nothing laying over me, not one fucking thing. 
to yeah. have a day like that. Oh, today's a good day to die. If if it's today, you're clean. I, I've told everybody you're I love clean. them. Yeah, and I'm yeah. good. And I'm you've done I'm the right clean. things. You feel like you're in a good space. You have, you're not creating any damage. Right. Yeah. It's a good. Day so to if die. it's today, it's good a good day, day to die. To die. Yeah. And that's so I use that in Long Feather Song. I. That's really the meaning of the song. Is yeah. like getting through that. But I used Crazy Horse and General Custer. Sure. And uh, you know Manifest Destiny and. Poison pill, poison blankets, and all that stuff. This this long feather, this crazy horse, or long feather, it's like saying, "Well, I've done everything right today. So if it's today, today's a good day to die." Cool. It's Isn't a great it? song. Yeah. It's a great song. So you've been, you know, the the bridge from the bridge from tenderness to to lighthouse. Right. Uh, I've I've just I've watched you. Not not only. Uh, Kind of find a different uh, 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 a different color, I guess, to express yourself in musically. It's 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 just a it's 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 very very direct. It's very simple. Uh, it's very heartfelt. Uh, it's not so you know amplified and rock and roll. Right. But but, but uh, it's it's kind of like uh, like a like a singer songwriter kind of kind of thing, you know. Yeah. And and. Uh, Talk about the, the the bridge from like tenderness to to lighthouse. I mean, also just as a writer, you, you know, you become just a great writer. You know, writing right. this, this time of writing, yeah, not musically. Yeah. You know, it's 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 really cool to see see you uh, open up, and I've just enjoyed as your friend and also being a fan of yours. Uh, seeing you find different creative new fields to plow plow over and plant some shit in yeah you know, grow some stuff and so talk about that a little bit yeah so so writing of words you know that really i mean there's a couple things there there's my relationship with mark lanigan you know there's a he, fly in here that keeps landing on it's not our, landing on you is it landing on me no it's, it goes goes from your head to my uh, head to your head to my head oh, okay yeah. <laughs> Evan, <laughs> fix it in post. Uh, fix it in post. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're good smelling pieces of shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, so meeting Mark in, in uh, Mark Lanigan in about '96. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, and he yeah. was sober, and he was I was like this two years sober guy, like, mm -hmm. and he would come up to my house and. Um, I knew his two, you know, but at that point he had two acoustic records out, which were just like mm -hmm. immense. I'm like, oh, you're that, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I don't, you know, like, and he was looking to do something else. And I'm like, okay, I don't know. I had this song called Song for Beverly and he really liked it. I'm like, maybe we could figure something out. Mm -hmm. you, you can sing it or, but, but more than any of that, I just became friends with him and his like, he turned me on to some authors and got me like a roomy book. Like, he gave me these yeah. really cool presents, you know, like he would think that would hit with me. Sure. And um, then I played on this Field Songs records. Right. Um, and I played drums on it. I played a bunch of weird stuff, mm -hmm. you know, gu guitar and bass. And um, Ben Shepard was on there. It was just a bunch yeah. of cats, you know? Sure. And Mark, just the way he slowed things down, I mean, we all wish to sing like Mark Lanigan. It's yeah. not going to fucking happen. Yeah. But uh, yeah. But the way, he, and he would think about his words and stuff, and I'm like, how do I, you know? And at this point, I had Loaded and then Velvet Revolver, and I was, everything was cranked up, and let's go, yeah. let's go. But at the heart of, like, where I come from, yeah. you know, uh, is it like the, I saw The Clash in 79 before London Calling, and this gig, like, changed my life. It's like these guys, like, so exotic from England, you know, that the Paramount, there was 150 <laughs> people there, and and they were just like, it was so truthful, and I'd seen Led Zeppelin, loved it, the yeah. Kingdom, but that's, they're, they're way far, you know, yeah, you can't yeah. touch them, they're Led Zeppelin, yeah, yeah. they fly away in a jet plane, you know, yeah. that says Led Zeppelin on it. Yeah. The Clash pulled up, you know, on a station wagon, <laughs> you know, and they were like, uh, uh, a security guy punched a guy in the, who was pogoing, and he thought he was like being violent, <laughs> broke his nose, and it's one of our friends, you know. And uh, so the Clash stopped the show, and, and Paul Simonon went back, got like the firefighting axe, yeah. and said, "Oh," and Strummer's like, 
There's no difference between us and you. We'll cut down this this fucking fence here. <laughs> And uh, we're in this together. Oh, that's cool. And, uh, you know, we're in this together. Yeah. Like, oh. Yeah, what a moment. Oh. And then seeing Iggy like six, six months later and like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So how do I get back to like, I, I wrote a bunch of songs when I was starting like 14 yeah. into my teen years and made a bunch of different records and stuff. How do I get, I get back to that three chords and the truth thing that I saw mm -hmm. in seven, 1979, The Clash? Sure. I mean, I have a radio show now. It's called Three Chords and the Truth. You, you know? do. You because do. I just try to find great songs that cut through all the bullshit, you know? Yeah. And so how do I get back to that? And these three chord, four chord songs that I've started to write, started with a song called Wasted Heart I wrote in like 2009. And then the tenderness project i had all these songs i my manager brian klein's like let's let's put something out in this vein sure and i got shooter jennings we use shooter's band now when you use use shooter's band you're gonna have pedal steel yeah you're gonna have aubrey on of the course. fiddle you're gonna have all that those voicings that suddenly your songs take on this new like oh this is americana or whatever whatever you fuck you want to call it yeah but the songs cut through, and, and the three chords, and the, sure. like the words are really, I read great authors, and I've, I've, my, the favorite author is Cormac McCarthy, is, is one, and he, like he'll use three words where other authors might use 50. And those three words will cut you at your sure. knees, dude. It, it'll break yeah. you, you know? Yeah. And so how do you do that? And I uh, really started working on my lyric writing. Boiling it down to the bare essence of, yeah. you know, yeah. Well, you know, it's it's been an element, uh, you know, it's been an element of, of of your band style, Guns N' Roses. You guys have you did you did the acoustic EPs. You right. you, you know uh, you have songs that are that are based a little bit more, that are a little bit more boiled down. You know that influenced me. You know, you guys have been a big big influence on me. I remember being going to the loading dock backstage when you guys first kind of came to the to the arena at, at the at the at the center there and. Uh, Opening for Maiden. Um, yeah. Is that the one? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, and you know you and you, 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 you that that EP seeing a rock band uh, of your guys' caliber put out the 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 debut album that you did and then to be able to to do that uh, you know that inspired us to do like Sap and Jar of Flies and right. stuff like hey okay we can we don't just have to be a loud right. rock band we could we can play around with with uh, you know whatever form we want to take. Because you did that early, that inspired us, I think, to take some some chances as well and, and put out the, uh, uh, the SAP EP. And I think because we did it early, yeah. and maybe we weren't, it wasn't so baked in with, with like the fan base. It was, it was early in the process, like, oh, whoa, check this out. These guys, yeah. you know, it, uh, I think it, it, it widens the, the, I think the, right. the playing field, I guess. You know, you're not locked into just being a metal band or a rock band or whatever. Yeah. You can kind of do anything. So, mm. those, so I see those seeds were always there. That's how and, we wrote and, Appetite. Main, yeah, I mean, yeah. eight tenths of it was was on acoustic, acoustic guitars. Yeah. You know? Stones, stone style. It's all we had, you it's know, acoustic, acoustic guitar yeah. and a, like a tape yeah. deck. Yeah, we'd yeah. Have like a place we could. Yeah. So okay, well, right now, 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 you know, okay, well, and then there's a bottle of night train sitting there, riding on the night train. <laughs> you know, okay, here we go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, acoustic guitars like. If you're like a young songwriter or whatever, yeah. or you're or you got your band. Like, if it sounds good on acoustic, maybe start there. You know, you you can put a lot of amplification before you behind you when you're done, and that might sound better, might sound worse. Yeah. But if it sounds good on on acoustic, and try to get your acoustic writing chops down because, I mean, it's good enough for. XL yeah. on Main Street yeah. and the Stones. Well, I mean, to me, to me, like if, if you can play a song acoustically, even if it's not not recorded that way yeah. initially, right? If you can play it acoustically and still have an impact. That's a damn good song. Right. So that, I agree with you. That's a great place to start. Um, who else? Uh, did you have other musicians besides me come into the project? Besides you? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, so so I pulled. We got some masters back. I think during this this period. Um, that were a record I made called Beautiful Disease, but they took all my track. They took all my masters. Uh, I had a release date. I did all the press. Uh, I'd done all the pictures, all the album cover and everything. 
And Geffen got bought by Universal and just shut down like a, a million records. Mine was one of them. <laughs> okay. You know, there was an LA Times article <laughs> out about this record I just done. And I'm like, what do you mean they're not putting it out? Like, this Tuesday or like forever? Sure. Yeah. We'll see, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, not only did they do that to me, they, um, they kept it. They kept my master. So oh, you can nice. buy these nice. back for like 300 grand yeah. or whatever for fucking what these are my songs <laughs> recorded in my house you know <laughs> and so i have had abe laborio um played oh, drums great. on all this stuff great yeah and uh, and puffy mike came up and played on a couple songs oh that's great yeah. and so i had all these songs and i had this song called hope and um i can get to i can tell you what how i chose these songs for this record too sure um but i had i mean abe laborio you know he plays for He's amazing. Paul, he's, he's amazing. Paul, he's Paul McCartney's guy. Yeah, yeah. and uh, he he did a couple songs on the the Brighton record. Yes, as well. he did. So, yes, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so, so we know Abe, and yeah. and uh, so I had these 1996 recordings, and we finally got them back. Brian's like, "Hey, uh, really? Like, <laughs> we still doing this?" And we got them back, yeah. and and we listened to some stuff on it. It's like, oh, it's so fucking good. I mean, Abe and the, the acoustics are on it are good and all this stuff and and it was kind of more there's a song called hope and slash came up to my house in 96 in hollywood hills yeah and we were hanging out what the intent wasn't for him to come and play on a song but we were down in my little studio and he's listening he's like hey man you need a guitar on that and this is when he wasn't doing amazing and i was again i was like that bright-eyed sober guy today's a good day to die you know uh <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I knew how to record on tape. I was just yeah. that good enough. And the, the amp was mic'd up. And, okay. And I had a Les Paul, and, and he he played on the song Hope. And so he forgot. I played him the song just, you know, what, a couple months ago when we decided oh, to put it on the cool. record. He's like, dude, I don't remember. <laughs> because this is great. <laughs> so I did re-sing it for this, just so my voice sounds the same. Throughout yeah. this, sure. Um, but other than that, we the, the song "Hope." We got the lighthouse to begin, which is like that that beacon of hope. Um, at the end, you got just don't know, which is like wondering what's next. And so I tried to make this like a a, a great a, a good book that I like to read. It has yeah. it has valleys and it's got you know hills and and subject matter wise, lyrically wise. I wasn't really even listening to the music it's like. What song goes into this? I have this song called Forgiveness, which is about, you know, uh, things we've gone through as a, a uniquely American in the last six years, like yeah. the divide and all this sure. crap. And I travel so much, I'm like, I'm just not seeing the divide as it's being said on the yes, news. It's being you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Holy shit. Like, sure. Yeah. Uh, people are fucking cool. Like, 98% of people are yeah. fucking want to be cool you know mm -hmm. and and uh so there's a song called forgiveness it's so sort of social political i mean yeah, sort of and um uh, i got god on 10th street which is just pissed off motherfucker on the, on the <laughs> corner spitting and fucking curling his toes and looking at us like you guys fucked it all up um but it's, it's some humor but it's kind of it like floats through things where i think we were probably had time to start thinking about um, during that time, and uh, uh, lyrically, yes, some of that seeped in. I wrote a lot of songs. Some of them are more real, like that are yet to come out. Um, kind of more hardcore, sure. social, political, because yeah. there's a lot to be pissed off about, you know. Yeah. Uh, and being pissed off is okay to write a song. That's when you gotta like look at your lyrics afterward and go, "That's going. That's the dumbest thing you could ever say." <laughs> sure. How yeah. the fuck did you write that? And, you know, try to get that intent through there. Well, let's say your first draft is written with your heart and your second draft is written with your head, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we've talked about, uh, I think, all of the songs uh, on Lighthouse uh, except for Fallen. Yeah, Fallen. Um, and, uh, again, this was... So... This period was, uh, this two-year period was super intense, like I, I, I kind of told you um, 
about Lighthouse, you know, with Susan and I. It was super yeah. intense in such a fucking wonderful way, you know? And, um, not, and not to be... Uh, I'm not afraid to write about my chick, you know? And because she's been such a lady. Yeah. And 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 there's times when I see her, like I I fucking might lose my breath a little bit, but she walks in, you know, and it's like I just keep falling. I'm I've fallen for you, you know, <laughs> and it doesn't stop. It's crazy, you know, and uh, uh, crazy in all the best of ways, especially like when we're literally we're like. Whoa, another one got divorced. We're like, we're like the fucking <laughs> the, the wall of judgment back here going, and we're cool, right? We're cool, right? We're fucking cool. And, uh, you know, uh, we get it on and we do all the, the great stuff you should be doing, you know? And, sure. and um, uh. you know, Hope and God on 10th Street and Just Don't Know are all pieces of the path. Yeah. Yeah, but Susan's a really big piece of the path. And if I were not to write about her on... Any record sure. I do would be ridiculous. So yeah. um, it's just, uh, she's my fucking, my thing. Um, and a cool thing happened when I got done with this record, which was I went straight in, was asked to go help on an Iggy record, like write some songs. Record. That's right. You got to play with the, play with the Ig man. Yeah. So we made this, re we made p part of his record for him. Was uh, that, uh, that was Andrew Watt, right? And Chad. Okay. We're, we yeah. made yeah. like two yeah. Aussie records and this Iggy record. Sure. <laughs> you know, we do it all in like a day. Yeah. You know, let's write the songs. That's good. Let's record it. Great. <laughs> Sounds fucking awesome. Let's move on. Uh, and so the Iggy thing, thing, so Iggy was very stoked on it all and he wanted us to play some shows with him. I'm like, well, yeah, of course. You're my, you're my ultimate, you're the of course. all time yeah. guy. Yeah. You know, uh, God, that must have been cool, man. So we got to, he said, any set list you guys want to do? Go ahead. You know, pick Stooges songs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, down on the streets and, and loose and TBI. And, uh, but um, we played the songs. I don't know how it happened. Somehow during like rehearsals for these shows, um, he agreed to do like a spoken word thing on, for the lyrics of Lighthouse. And so I think we did the rehearsals, did the shows, I came back to Seattle, and Martin, um, we've not mentioned producer extraordinaire, Martin Fabier, who's, without him, none of this shit would be possible. Yes. Yeah. He's just the very, very best. Um, but we, it was Martin and I sitting in the, in the control room, and those, you know, my little speakers there, and suddenly the voice of God. There'd be only like <laughs> Iggy or Lanigan, you know, like those sure. voices, just shaking the speakers. Yeah. Like, wow, my voice has never moved these speakers like that <laughs> by itself. And we put in um, this kind of ethereal music behind it, all of the chords of Lighthouse and, uh, and made it a classic old school reprise at the end. After Just Unknown, then there's a space and then this Lighthouse reprise with Iggy just yeah. talking. God, that's got to be so heavy to have, uh, you know, what that guy means to you uh, as a fan and also setting you on a musical direction, you know, reading reading your <laughs> your lyrics into a creative piece, you know. Crazy. Uh, and, you know, l let alone making a record with him. But having you, like, man, you know, dude, I pinched myself yeah. because... It's cool, though. It's cool to celebrate shit like that, yeah. you know what I mean? To keep... It's, that's, the, that's the little kid that's still alive dude. in there, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, go ahead, finish what you were going to say. Well, but like, you know, Iggy, that's the guy who taught me. It's like yeah. Iggy, Lemmy, and Prince for me. You know, those sure. are the big three, and Lemmy okay. and Prince are gone. The, ho the Holy Trinity. Yeah, yeah. kind of, yeah. you know, yeah. there's just plenty more, but that would be my, Yeah, that's a good place. Um, and to have Iggy there is kind of, Unreal, but it's no more unreal than having you come in and I get to watch you. You know how I love watching you fight for your solos. <laughs> Jerry does this thing. He doesn't, you know, we've seen the players that come in and just go, <laughs> I, I, like, okay, you're done, I guess. I have Tourette's syndrome when I record and write. I'm pretty got a truck in mouth most of the time, but it's 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 pretty spectacular. He is he is correct. I love, so, <laughs> but he fights for these the, your your melodic things you fight for. 
<laughs> you know, I, I mean, but you are, you're used to pulling things out of thin air. Like, this is what we do, right? You, yeah. There's not a song, and then there isn't, and there's not a solo, and you wanted it to be this thing, and you fought that guitar, and you got, the, you got your sound, and you're like, okay, this is cool, and then you fought this melody, and you, you found it, and then when you connected it all together, there's that, the fight up to that sure. is, is great. Fuck, yeah. God, God, <laughs> God damn! And I'm like, I, I'm, like Mar I I'm like Martin. He's in. He's fucking in. We got. He, this is gonna be good. And, sort of uh, apologizing. Sorry, guys. I'm not mad at anybody. This is just my thing. And he's like, this is just what he does, man. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. I think we're gonna get something good because I've seen you do it so many times. Like sure. Jesus. Sure. I think the first time I saw you do it, I'm like, oh man. He's. I guess he must be really stuck. And then this thing came out. I'm like, Oh, that's his process. Well, there's 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 different kinds of players, and 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 uh, uh, I've heard comedians talk about this a lot. There's a, there's there's a lot of people who are great at improv, mm. and then there's people who are who are, who are you know can can deal with some improv, but they kind of need to work off a page a little bit. Yeah, put in the work to make sure you got the you know do some do some reps, make sure you got it together yeah. so it's nice and smooth and you feel confident about it. When you go into those uh, situations where like like working with you or whatever, like I have nothing. I have nothing. So so that it's it's it, You got two guys staring <laughs> at you. <laughs> I have nothing. I'm like I'm not and I'm not an improv guy. I'm yeah. not, I'm not a guy that's musically trained. I don't think that you are either. Yeah. We just kind of no, that's find why I appreciate it. it. it you know, you so I appreciate you. You, you, you got to you got to fight and you got to find it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so if you see Jerry like any of his solos, like yeah. Alison Ch whatever, Brighton, whatever he's done, those are things he's fought for. Just he, he's not one of those guys like I don't know who your name, I don't, yeah. but like oh yeah, here it is, you know. Yeah. You fight, and I think the Is that fight, an E flat major with a midian scale? Or? I think there's a I flat no seven on there. No idea. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know this <laughs> no stuff. Idea. But uh, but that's I think your 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 solos, pretty much all of them, because I got to play a couple shows with you guys playing rhythm guitar, and that's right. Started I'm like, can you come play four songs? How about when William first yeah, came in? Yeah, I remember. Nine. Do you want to just play? That's so why I learned. Ended up learning. Uh, 27 songs, I think. I remember. But that yeah. critically, critically, I knew all the songs, but critically listening to guitar parts. And that's when I was like, holy fuck. You know, I mean, I knew you were always great, but like, <laughs> and the solos, like, how did he find that in this, you know? And, and uh, that really, like, your guitar playing, me doing, critically going through that, um, I mean, your whole band, but your guitar playing, because I was playing like, the sure. second guitar. Yeah. And holy shit. Um, and to, to have you come and do like, hey man, I'll play on this thing, you know, like, okay. Yeah. I mean, fuck, that's more than just sure. us being, I mean, for, for me, it's, it's, it's in the same area as the Iggy thing. Of course, thing. yeah. As, for me, it's, you know, you're like, and um, well, to I have Slash man, and Abe. Well, dude, you know. I, I love you, you know, yeah. as, as a friend, but you're a fucking, you know, huge hero of mine, and I love your fucking band, and, and uh, you know, I give, a, I give a lot of credit to, you know, there, there's certain things that strike you. You mentioned the, the Iggy Pop show, you know, your, your, yeah. your guys this was one, one of those for me, wow. you know, so, yeah. you know. How yeah. about that? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. It's nice to still be sitting here making music and talking about it, you know? A couple and, guys and that people could, show up and like it. They do. That's nice, you know? It's yeah. cool. Yeah. There's a few of us <laughs> that are on that stage that probably shouldn't be there, you know? That's true. Yeah. That's true, but, you know. Uh, we you know, are. We are. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, today today's a good day to die. Yeah. Yeah. We have a... Uh, we have a few uh, uh, questions that the fans uh, put together yeah. for me to read and ask you. Okay. So we have uh, uh, from Dylan Cox, uh, how does this album contrast with Tenderness? I love that record. Um, contrast, I think it's really um, not even um, so much songwriting. It's kind of, I've found my kind of little vein uh, not that I write the same kind of songs, but uh, I'm, my comfort area where tempos and I'm not afraid to go and do these certain things. And 
Get uh, weird. Go to different, get weird, <laughs> get weird, exactly. Yeah. Um, I'll use this Moog, you know, I don't know how it works, but let's try it out. Um, but tenderness, um, this would be, if I use Shooter's Band for, for this record, Dylan, it would probably sound a lot more like, like tenderness. His band is so yep. kind of iconic in how they play and sure. do their thing. and, and uh, so if you're just like the new the artist that comes in with his band, it's going to be you with those great players. And it's going to sound like them because they have their own identity. So this was really, you know, we talk about Jerry being there. But, and, uh, and Iggy, Iggy did his thing from Miami or whatever. Um, Slash and Abe, that was in 1996. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the period of the lockdown or whatever, you want to... It was Mar just Martin and I until Jerry came in the studio. Yeah, that's you right. You know, really, right. like we had Jamie come up a couple times, the drummer, for like two days. Here's nine songs. Can we, you know, he'd stay at a hotel and we'd do the COVID protocol, all that. But it was really just Martin and I. And then yeah. you coming in was really nice fucking energy. Like, man, this feels like I'm having somebody play on the record, you know, yeah. after being alone this whole time. Sure. So uh, I don't know. The difference is... Uh, I think probably just to playing a lot of the stuff myself, um, uh, but having some other different different players. Uh, the local guys I had, Tim DiGiulio, I don't want to not mention his great guitar playing, and and Ryan Burns on keyboards, and and Jamie Douglas on drums. Yeah, cool. Uh, Maddie Corgnell uh, asks, uh, "This is the song has saved my life." during a few panic attacks uh, when I wanted to give up. What inspired you to be so open about your mental health struggles? Love you so much, thank you for everything. Um, I don't think I've ever been afraid to really talk about my me you know, uh, mental health. It's been a thing. I've, I've started uh, getting panic attacks when I was 16. My first one was in my mom's shower and I thought the house, there was an earthquake. Sure. But the house had sunk three feet. Yeah. And I come to crawl out of the and the shower and nothing had moved. Yeah. And so I they, didn't know that about yeah. you. Yeah. They you rushed me to the that. ER up yeah. at Group Health. Yeah. And uh I thought I because I'd done L S D and mushrooms and you heard back then those scare <laughs> tastics, you could get some stuck in you and be have a bad trip for the rest of yeah. your life. And I thought, Oh, it's finally happening. Not coming at back. At sixteen. Not you know? coming back. Yeah. Not coming back from this. <laughs> <laughs> You did all those drugs. Um, but it was, uh, they, they, I think they gave me something. And then I went yeah. and talked to a, like a psychiatrist. Yeah. And like, he put this stuff on the, this board and he goes, this is what's happened. You had a panic attack. Like, ah. And I thought it was the only person in the world who had it. And that's really scary. And finally that girl, I knew, I was about 18, friend of a friend. She said, oh, you, these panic attacks you get? I just read a book. Like millions of people have these. Yeah. And when I heard that, I was like, Oh, this weight came off my shoulders. I moved to LA when I was 19 or 20, and and um, and I, I I found a little way to cope with panic attacks and, and, and alcohol, you know. And then sure. that became when I could start affording stronger alcohol or whatever. That really worked. It fucking really. Sure. Worked and then you yeah. know pills were great or whatever. And then I I got a taste for you know cocaine because you, you drink longer. Of course. You know yeah. let's do that. That's, That's a great. Yeah. But then you do too much coke and you have the major panic attack. So then you drink you know half of your half gallon just <laughs> to get over your panic attack. Sure. It's not the healthiest way to deal to with deal a, with a panic attack. Uh, and uh, yeah. so I self medicated for a good yeah. thirteen. Yeah. You know from sixteen to to thirty. Until my pancreas burst and my body just couldn't take it anymore. But how am I going to have panic attacks sober? You know, that was yeah. a real fuck. And, and then I was in my dojo, like I said, twice a day. You know, I'm like, what's the mystery to this thing? And I found some really, I did try Lexapro and what else I don't know, you know, as I say in sure. the song, you know. Yeah. Oh, you can't get hard on Alexa. Like, that's not going to work, you know. Like, yeah. that's giving me a panic attack. Not to be so out, but yeah. true. Um, I, I relate to all of all of what you said. I've I've been through all of that too. Yeah. And, and uh, you you have to find a, you know, it's it's uh, uh, you have to find find uh, for yourself, uh, you know, 
a healthier way, I guess, to, to deal with it. And, you know, and that takes some effort and some trying some things out until yeah. you find some place to settle. Yeah. Shit's never going to be perfect. And it's, you know, uh, you know, thing that things are always going to happen. Uh, you can have a flare up and, you know, and yeah, yeah. I, I deal with a lot of borderline clinical depression issues. Yeah, I, so, yeah. you know, uh, I found out mine wasn't yeah. clinical. So yeah. I have, yeah. I yeah. have, I'm under the care now yeah. of a psychiatrist. It just sounds cool. It sounds it more does. serious. So I just said clinical, you know. I, like. well, I thought mine, cause I, I felt mine fell into depression right after the, right. the Guns N' Roses stadium tour we did. The first one. Yeah. And we get back, I'm in the LA. Yeah. I'm getting a massage, dude. Yeah. Kids are at home, everybody's home. We just did the stadium tour. Things are going great in like my business life, my old band's back together. My God, this is great. I'm getting a massage at home. Yeah. Life's awesome. I Life's feel like awesome. Shit. Yeah. I dove yeah. into the ground and, yeah. and it was a depression. It lasted. So I at that point they found a, a psychiatrist for me and I had to be McBob had to drive me down yeah. there. I couldn't drive. You know the yeah. deal. Tie shoes, nothing. Sure. And got me in, and I got we got we got figured out. So I'm I'm under the care. I got good health insurance once a week, man. I know it's cool that uh, you know for me, uh, you know, music is one of those things that mm -hmm. that maybe softens some of the edges yeah. of the imperfect irregularities that make up a human being, like make up you and, and make up me and everybody else. And so it's, uh, it's always been there. So when you put something into a song like that mm -hmm. and you're that open and raw and honest and, and you know, it connects with somebody else. Yeah. Like you said, it's not just me. Yeah. yeah. It's not just me. It's a human experience that you, uh, uh, I think that's the really magical thing about music. It's 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 a uh, it's an, in, an inanimate piece of plastic that you're putting like real thoughts and real emotions and experiences in. And you send it out into the world when people still had tapes and records and stuff like that. Now it's files or whatever, but you send it out in the world and somebody picks that inanimate thing up, puts it on a machine and plays it, and then all of this life comes out yeah. of it and you connect with it. It's magical. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Abby asks, uh, you're the reason I picked up a bass at 13 years old. Yeah, like what is your all-time favorite bass that you've ever played? My all-time favorite is is really just that um, first bass I, I was able to buy when we got a record advance and I was able to buy real gear for the first time in my <laughs> yeah. life. I was 23 yeah. years old and I bought that Fender Jazz Special that I'd been looking at. We rehearsed right behind Guitar Center. Yeah. So we were those guys, those fucking guys that would go in Guitar Center and look at shit and play it and never <laughs> buy it. We could. And finally I came in one day and I'm like, I want that and I want this GK head and I want this, you know, yeah. uh, chorus pedal. Yeah. I want this Ibanez chorus pedal and these strings, I think, and, and I got like stuff, you know? Yeah. And that jazz special, I played it, so I knew it had like the kind of hot rotted out pickups. It, For me, it, it's got the growl, and it's um, also got, I, I mean, I listen to a lot of like Parliament and Prince and, and Cameo and stuff during oh, yeah. that period. Yeah. Um, and I wanted That's not good. to be a slap bass player, but to have some of those killer yeah. pop-offs and stuff. Yeah. Um, and you know, you don't want to be in a rock band playing. I didn't want to be in a rock band playing like some funky of, stuff. Some of the best bass bass players in the world, R and B and funk. Oh and, my god. You know, yeah. 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 So just to have yeah. a little bit of that sound, um, this bass, uh, the Fender Jazz special, 1996, 1986, uh, Japanese made, and now I I have a a model that's you got that. your own bass yeah yeah so that bass that bass uh let's see here we have uh anna louisa you and jerry have done some great collaborations before and make a great duo what's the best part about working with me him she says but i'm saying me what's the greatest thing about working with me yeah yeah, yeah. Eh? Well, I think I've covered, you know, I, I got to work with you uh, a lot on, on Brighton, or, you know, enough. Yeah. And um, Jerry, uh, Abby, Jerry is a, uh, a complex music uh, maker, 
uh, uh, songwriting. That's the way he plays. Fucking his voice, uh, places he finds to sing, weird places you find to sing that, <laughs> I mean, that's genius, you know. Uh, so to, to be able to step in with Jerry, and, and we did a video, which we're going to talk about in a second, for Just Don't Know, you and I. Yeah. But w that was two guys, that gave us two hours to have acoustic guitars in our hands. Yes, we made the video, but we also wrote like four songs. <laughs> um, got about four or five good ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Ideas, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So I love making music with Jerry, Abby. Uh, I, I know it's in our cards at some point. Not too distant future. Who knows? To be continued. To be continued. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you, by the way. Yeah. Ariana uh, asks, uh, do you find it rewarding to turn your toughest or most challenging experiences into new material? Is it gratifying or is it a catharsis to release it through music? I mean, I'm sure it's a catharsis, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, I uh, agree with that. you got to be careful on what you, I mean, what it might seem like I'm putting everything out there, I'm not. Yeah. Definitely not. Sure. Uh, because it's nobody wants to know everything about anybody uh, 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 a person, and I don't want to expose fucking faults. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not, sure. You know, but I guess you know th this song is going to save my life. It's exposing a fault. It's not really a fault. It's just a. It's my thing. I got you know. It's 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 not a fault, but. Um, I think having some nuggets. Uh, Nuggets of those things in there, like we were talking about earlier. Uh, uh, okay, well that stays. Mm, that not that whatever. That lyric. Uh, yeah. The cool thing about writing, uh, and also you know, there's so much subject matter. You know, uh, the way you what you explained with Longfeather. You know, that's yeah. that's that's multiple things telling a story, and I, I love that. I, I love things that I love things that may mean one thing, might mean another. Right. Uh, so maybe the one person that's going to mean this to another person that might mean something else. Yeah. I also like writing sometimes uh, uh, from a character. Maybe it's not me. Huh? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'll, I'll 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 think from the point of view of a character. You're you're the the constant that's always in the process. So that that truth and that honesty and and the experiences and things you think that's always gonna be there. You can kind of always trust that, that that's there. Right. But it's interesting, I, I, I've even given myself, uh, and I know this is your interview and I'm on a tangent Fine, no, here, no, but, go. but uh, kind of recently, within the last few years or whatever, I'll get myself an assignment. Okay, yeah. all right. Okay, I'm gonna write about this, you know? And like, and that's very unusual for me because I, I usually stumble around in the dark till I find something. But like when I worked with Tyler Bates yeah. on uh, uh, the the John Wick soundtrack for the second song or whatever. Okay. okay I'm gonna write a character song. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Giving myself an assignment to, okay, I'm gonna write about the character. That was interesting to me. Wow. You know? anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Assignment. Yeah, assignment. I gave, I'm, myself I'm sure an, I, I gave myself an assignment. Yeah, I, I'll probably try that. <laughs> I'm gonna now. Okay, I got, that's another tool I got now. All sure. Right. Uh, Matthew Ramirez from Bogota. All right. Yeah. Uh, throughout your career, you have explored different musical genres and projects, which is awesome. What inspires you to venture into different musical styles, and how do you think these experiences have enriched your career as a musician? Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know about how it's enriched my career so much. Um, I don't know about that. You know, like uh, being in punk rock bands. I was like in hardcore punk rock band. I was in the Fastbacks, which was like a really fun girl pop punk band. You know, yep. uh, uh, the Living, which is more like the Clash, and the, you know, the far super hardcore. I was playing drums, playing different instruments in different bands. That really broadened my whole thing. For so, for when I made the move to. LA, I had a guitar, I had a bass, I sold my dr drum kit before I left because it was a piece of shit. It was like, how am I gonna get this down here? <laughs> and um, and uh, so then the, the cops came and took my guitar away. So I'm a bass player. And then, you know, we formed that band pretty quick after I went there. So I became a bass player. Um, but different genres, like, I don't need to, I'm playing tonight in this 
fucking great rock band. We play fucking great in in the kind you of rock we play. Do. We play a wide spectrum of of styles in, in our in our music. When I go to my studio, I'm not going to try to even mess with that. I'm not going to mess with that. I'm going to write songs. Some of my songs I write can be used for that for sure. Uh, and I have some, uh, but uh, <laughs> you know, like like doing this, doing the shooter record, like okay, you want to call it Americana, whatever you want to call it, I don't care. But there's a beautiful fiddle, and she can sing, yeah. amazing, and the John the pedal steel, and he can sing amazing and play guitar, and and um, and now broadening. I mean, I, I I swear, you know, like. If I think ahead, like if Jerry and I do something, I'm like we talked, we joked about it earlier. Like, just need a Moog Fatty, two acoustic guitars, you know, some weird Nord keyboard that we'll figure it out, and our songs, you know, and let's make something fucking. So I just think of that. I don't think like what do I want it to sound like because it'll end up turning out yep. how it wants to sure. sound. I think. Here's a couple of fun ones here. Right. Uh, this is from Michael Ashley. Uh, I think I know the answer, but what band would you have wanted to be in for their debut record? Besides your own. Yes. Ooh, shit. <laughs> you know I've never been asked that question. Well, I, who are you gonna I, say? I, I added the I added the uh, uh besides your own band because your yeah. debut is pretty badass. <laughs> who who would you think? For me, the debut album. I mean that fly is just a once. He really it, likes, it's he been really, not been there he, the he whole really, time. He really likes me. No. Uh, God, that's a tough one. Whoa. For their debut album. I mean, I, I, I mean, you don't need two guitar players in Van Halen, but I might say Van Halen. <laughs> pretty good first record. Yeah, pretty, right. Pretty great record. <laughs> Just that rise, you know, to be a part of that rise. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, you want to be part of the rise or something special? Like, yeah. for a Stooges record, nobody gave a shit until, like, ten years later. A, a, a Pistols record or right. Led Zeppelin? We'll, I don't know. What do you we'll, want? We'll, we'll, we'll move on. Yeah. Uh, Lee Sharp wants to know. Uh, and this is a tough one too. What? How, how, I, I don't know how to answer these questions uh, because there's so many great uh, options. But I'm going to ask it anyway. So Lee Sharp wants to know, uh, what do you think is the greatest song in history? <laughs> Jerry hasn't written it yet. Ah. Ah. See, this is, it's such a personal, it's such a personal thing, and and I know for me, and probably for Lee too, man. Like, uh, who asked the question? Like, it's so hard to answer those sorts of questions because, like, you know, I'm, I might give you a different answer in five minutes or ten minutes or two hours or or the next day. You know, I mean, there's so many. Who's the greatest drummer of all time? Who's the greatest yeah. guitar player of all time? You know, like. It's 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 impossible to answer that stuff. It, very me. impossible. Yeah. Ethan Hamilton. You know, he asks, uh, uh, as a known Cormac McCarthy fan, uh, you recently even got a tattoo related to one of his books. Uh, what is your favorite Cormac McCarthy novel and why? Ooh. Yeah, they're all fucking amazing. Blood Meridian. Is my favorite novel. I don't know if you've read that yet. They've been trying to make a movie, yeah, a movie of, of it for yeah, 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 but it's just so gnarly and so complex. Um, it's a western, and it's, but there's a lot of human ears in it, yeah. and like human body parts that they ride around with on their horses. And <laughs> um, but the language in the book is uh, into the fight. You know what it reminds me of when you fight for your solos. <laughs> That's Blood Meridian, like okay. all the way through, he's fighting for the, the word, and it's just such an amazing ride to take. Okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's a, that's why I, I think I identify so much with your fight for your solos. I'm like, <laughs> it's gonna be worth it, man. This is gonna cool. be worth it. Yeah. Uh, Jason Shemansky wants to know uh, what you'd like to be remembered for. Is it your solo work? Being the bassist for Guns N' Roses, being an advocate for mental health, being a, oh. uh, this is all, probably all of it. Being a husband and a father or something else. 
Yeah, I think when it comes down to it, the the, the thing is, you know, father and, and a husband, of course, you know. That, number one. That's number one. Yeah. That's everything. My girls are, you know, all three of my girls are everything. Fuck, man, I don't know. I've... <laughs> Lemmy had a great funeral. We were all there, man. It's like, I want to be remembered like that. Hell yeah. You know, badass motherfucker, you know, like they got a statue. Him Surrounded at by good people who love you, that you love. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, folks, so uh, it's been fun uh, talking uh, with Mr. Duff McKagan here. I'm Jerry Cantrell, and uh, we are uh, going to debut. This is going to be the world premiere of the video for I Just Don't Know. Enjoy. It says so on the page. Yeah. Jerry's professional, man. All right, you can probably get some Oh, did the fly that? land on the yeah. page as you picked it up? Uh -huh. Right the fly there. landed on the page when you Of course it, it did. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> of course, man. No problem. I was the last born of a long line A time for change and reckoning Didn't talk much, but my eyes were wide Just too young to take it in I heard the yelling from the living room Hidden secrets hard to keep I think I held my breath from the age of two Held by my sister till I sleep Easy come and not so easy when it goes How long do we have, I wanna know Like a stream, you watch it flow To the river as it grows to the ocean's undertow to the ether's ever glow I don't know Didn't finish school I guess I got a clue Tried to break me down bust me in two not too blind to see what's right in front of me Too busy chasing down a destiny Easy come and not so easy when it goes How long do we have, I wanna know Like a stream, yeah, you watch it come and go To the river as it grows Easy come and not so easy when it goes How long do we have, I gotta know Like a dream, yeah, you watch it go To the river as it grows To the ocean's undertow To the ether's ever glow I just don't know Where the time and heartaches go And I don't know But the road is long And the seeds of life are so I'm the last one of the family Still wide-eyed and wondering They say it's easy come but not so easy when it goes 
How long do we have? I wanna know Like a stream, yeah, you watch it flow To the river as it grows Easy come, not so easy when it goes How long do we have? I gotta know Life's a dream now, you see it come and go To the river as it grows To the ocean's undertow To the ether's ever glow To the river as it grows To the ocean's undertow To the ether's ever glow I don't know I don't know